Hello everyone and welcome back to Fab FPV. Today we'll be showing you my build with the AOS Falcon 7 frame. First of all, if uh, my voice seems a bit different than usual, uh, that's because my name is Andrea. This channel is uh, actually run by my father, Fab, who is the one who usually talks in the videos, but uh, I help him manage the channel and today I wanted to make a video myself since I helped him build this drone. Um, that aside, let's start with the showcase. First of all, this is the Falcon 7 frame, designed by Falcon Rad FPV, who I suggest you check out if uh, you don't already know him. We chose this frame because it's uh, in the past we've had issues with uh, vibrations and frame resonance uh, on 7 inch drones, and this particular frame was designed with the goal of uh, minimizing that problem. And from our tests, I can definitely say that this is uh, one of the best frames I've ever used, uh, at least in terms of vibrations. My setup is a bit different than what is normally intended for this frame. The main gripe I had about it is uh, that I found the top plate to be a bit too skinny for the big uh, 6S2P uh, Leon batteries I normally use. And uh, I'm not able to tighten down the straps enough, and as you can see, the, the battery moves quite a bit and I can assure you that these straps are tightened down uh, as much as I can. This is not a problem for uh, for example this drone which has a much wider top plate. That is actually a frame that I designed myself but it's a topic for maybe another video. And uh, as you can see I'm using the same force and the battery almost doesn't move. So if you're using huge batteries like me this may be uh, a bit of a problem. To solve this issue, I have actually designed a top plate which gets wider where the velcro straps go through and it should make a big difference and keep the battery a lot tighter against the, the frame and allow me to use these uh, huge batteries with uh, even less vibrations. However, most people should be fine with the stock plate unless you're using these ridiculous batteries. So, uh, don't think that uh, the frame is poorly designed. In the front you can see that the camera mount is uh, a bit different from the one that Falcon Rad uses. I made this sort of canopy for the Cadex Polar camera which is 19mm uh, wide and it completely covers the lens and the underside which uh, should help in the case of a, of a crash or even with a front landing. The GoPro mount is fairly standard, uh, the only thing is that, that I've had to design one from scratch because I like to run a very low angle of about 10 degrees and I couldn't find uh, any models online so I, I had to do one uh, from scratch. If you're interested in uh, any of the parts that I show for this uh, frame I will be leaving a link for the, all, all the STL uh, files in case you want to print them yourself. Moving on to the back, uh, this part holds uh, a bunch of stuff. First of all, I'm running a BN220 GPS module. These are very cheap, but I have had literally zero problems with them, so uh, I don't feel the need to go to a bigger GPS. Uh, when they are mounted this far away from the carbon, I can get up to 20 satellites without uh, no issues. For the Crossfire antenna, I'm running a TrueRC bar pole which is mounted vertically for the best possible reception. I tend to run two of, two of these on my ultra long range builds, but uh, in this case uh, I wanted this drone to be a little more sporty and I didn't want to overcomplicate things, so I'm using just one. Um, and for the record, in uh, one of my recent videos I flew this thing to the top of a mountain with the crossfire set to just 10 milliwatts because I forgot to set it uh, properly and it never fails it. So at 2 watts uh, it never goes below 100% link quality, so even just a single antenna is absolutely fine. For the video antennas I'm using two TBS Triumph Pro long range. Again, this isn't an all-out uh, long range build, so I'm using uh, MMCX to SMA adapters for uh, an easier installation. They do cause some signal loss, but I have managed to reach 13 kilometers with a similar setup, so I should be absolutely fine. Moving on to the motors, these are T-Motor F90s, and they are 2806.5s, 1300 kV. 
They are quite expensive, at around 35 euros each, but they are really high quality. The bearings are especially smooth after months of usage, whereas uh, cheap motors get crunchy really quickly. For something more uh, freestyle oriented, you may want to use a higher KV, but for long range, 1300 seems like the sweet spot. You can see that they are soft mounted, uh, there is a small TPU green part uh, below them. This is a bit of a controversial topic. Some people say that soft mounting motor does absolutely nothing. In my experience, they do actually decrease vibrations, but not by a whole lot. I will say that soft mounting can fix uh, a bad design, but they can make a good frame even better. As for props, I like the HCOOP prop 7x4x3. Uh, they are not matting on this uh, drone, but they are the same ones that I use uh, on this uh, red one and they work really well. They are quite stiff and durable, unlike uh, the GAM fans, which I also tried, but uh, which I didn't like uh, that much. So let's take the top plate off and show you the inside. Excuse the cable routing, but I tend to leave my wires a bit longer than necessary in case I move uh, stuff around uh, on my other frames and I absolutely hate having to extend them when they are too short, so they are a bit messy here. So anyway, my flight controller is a Dieto Mamba F722. It's a fairly standard F7 board, but what I really like about it is uh, that it has a, a Bluetooth connectivity, and this makes stuff like tuning PIDs very easy out on the field with uh, just a smartphone. You can't really see the ESC, but it's a Rush Blade 60 amp, like the one uh, I've got here. Uh, it's really uh, good quality and it has a huge heatsink on it, which uh, keeps it cool even in summer. Right now it's snowing, I don't know if you can see it outside, so it's definitely not an issue. Another good thing about it is uh, that it has a very accurate uh, amp draw sensor which is uh, very critical for long range flights which allows me to know how much uh, milliamps I've used with uh, a single battery. I'm also running a 1000 microfarad low ESR capacitor, it's basically just there to prevent uh, voltage spikes and um, help the ESC last longer. Right below it is a Crossfire Nano RX receiver. As I said before, I normally run a diversity, but in this case I wanted to go for a smaller single antenna setup, so it's just a Nano RX. As for the video transmitter, I'm using a standard full-size DJI unit set at 1200 milliwatts and 50 megabits per second. It's quite big, but this frame has plenty of space. It's held onto the frame with these uh, TPU holders, which I designed myself. This allows the unit to be removed without any tools, unlike when it is held down with double-sided tape or zip ties. And here in the back, you can see once again the MMCX to SMA adapters going to the antennas. Finally, I have a VFly V2 buzzer. These things are super loud and they have an integrated battery which allows them to buzz even if your big uh, lion disconnects. I've had a crash in the past where the battery got ejected and it took hours to finally find the drone, so this uh, is a lifesaver. So this was just my quick showcase on my AOS Falcon 7. I hope you liked my build. In case you want to see some flight footage, I will leave uh, links for a couple videos uh, in, uh, in the description. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!